Yeah, in Chinese, in Singapore, we call it my two layer. Don't wait anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I never know lah. Maybe it will push down further before it rebound. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we still have some yeah. time to. But but if you hold long term, then this is no brainer lah. Yeah lah, yeah lah. It's yeah. definitely a good time. Okay, I think we are live on the, we are live on Facebook already. Yes. Okay, Ultimate Investing is live now. Okay, cool. And in the meantime, let me just invite the rest to actually come in. We have 30 over people outside. 37. Okay, wow, wow, wow. We have 39 people here with us this afternoon. Okay, oh, there's still a lot of people coming in. Okay, so for those of you who just came in, Okay, very warm welcome. Okay, thanks for joining us. I think for this battle between Intel and AMD. And of course, I'm sure you all know that today we have a special guest. <laughs> and I'm sure you can see him and his background. <laughs> very, very striking. Okay, later we will do some introduction about our special guest. Okay, but in the meantime, okay, just settle down. And uh, if you can hear me, if you can hear me loud and clear, can you just type in 555 in the chat box if you can hear me loud and clear. Okay. And if you can hear me, you can type in banana. Yes, if you can hear the banana vester, type in banana. <laughs> okay, good. You can hear us, Bob. Okay, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, we will wait for about maybe about five minutes, okay? Five minutes to settle down and also for the rest of the people to actually jump in. And uh, again, we are also live on Ultimate Investing Facebook group as well. So if let's say in between you need to go off because of some uh, arrangement and then you, want, you don't, do not want to miss any of this important sharing today, you can go back to the Facebook group and you will actually be able to find all this video as well. Wow, wow, wow. There's still a lot of people joining, coming in. Okay. Let me just close the waiting room so anybody can just come in. <laughs> Security. Okay, yeah. And of course, of course, for those of you who just came in, okay, just make sure that your audio is actually off, you know, so that in between there's no actually disruption. Okay, so just make sure that your audio stay off. And of course, if you have any questions or anything, okay, feel free to actually type it into the chat box. And then uh, later on, we will actually have a session, a small segment for Q&A if you have any question. Okay, yeah, I see all your response. 555 banana, 555 banana. <laughs> yeah, Brian said, wow, banana. <laughs> so Brian is very excited. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Let's just wait for about two more minutes before we actually get started. Okay, and once again, for those of you who just came in, okay, if you can hear my voice, okay, type in 555. Okay, and later on, if you can hear the banana vester, you can type in yeah. banana. If you can hear my voice, type banana. <laughs> Oh yeah, I actually I, I love the, I love this name. I think it just makes people happy. Oh, and I think okay, Charlie, Charlie is outside. <laughs> okay. All right, so maybe while waiting for more people to actually join in, okay, so maybe I'll just do a quick introduction. So for those of you first time here. Okay, usually we do this for our buy or buy series whereby we do it every week. We talk about Singapore stocks as well as US stocks and we actually share with you at the end of the day whether this is going to be a buy, B-U-Y or is this going to be a buy, buy, B-U-Y-E. And of course today, okay, I think for this particular uh, Sunday, we have something special because I think one of the hot topic right now is on these two companies called Intel as well as AMD. So we thought why not we actually do an analysis on both companies you know, so that, you know, it has a fairer, so you know who actually is winning this particular race, all right? And of course, I think uh, I managed to find uh, somebody who uh, managed to actually sh share this very, very, very well, and he has actually some in-depth knowledge into this area as well. So I thought, hey, actually, it would be best if I can actually invite somebody who is literally inside this tech area to actually come and share with you guys. 
So of course, okay, you from the uh poster, you guys have already seen that who is our special guest. Okay, can you just type in who is the special guest in the chat box? For those of you who have been following our poster. Okay, what is what is the name of our special guest today? Can you all type into the chat box? Okay, Brian say can. Okay. <laughs> Please, please, please type the full name. Lah. Please type the full name. Don't just type. <laughs> yeah, I only see. Okay, fantastic. Brian mentioned Banana Vester. Okay, only Brian is here. Okay, Esmond, thank you so much. Banana Vester. What about the rest of you? What about the rest of you? Can we have more response? Okay, can we have, you know, more replies? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Cole. Okay, so without further ado, without further ado, can we all type in clap? Okay, to welcome Banana Vester, okay, for this particular sharing. Can we just type in clap? Okay, yeah, okay. and can we invite Banana Vester to maybe do a quick introduction about yourself? And I think definitely people are interested. Uh, mm. Why Banana Vester? <laughs> okay, yeah. First thing is uh, I love banana a lot. I love to eat banana. <laughs> and uh, people actually uh, call me banana a lot uh, because... Uh, I don't know how to read and uh, write Chinese as a Chinese. Yeah, so that is the reason. Yeah, and I find it uh, it's a bit catchy lah. So uh, I just use this name lah, the banana wester. Okay, cool. Yeah. So from what I know as well, from what I know as well, so uh, banana wester can okay. He actually is also uh, he's a business owner. He's also a individual investor. And at the same time, his business is related to the tech area, related to these two companies that we are going to talk about. And uh, yeah, maybe you can share more about what you do and also uh, how long have you been investing? Uh, I have been investing for about five years. Okay. And uh, I also own a business doing uh, IT infrastructure. Okay. So uh, if you know company like Cisco, Fortinet, uh, all those uh, network and uh, network security, like Checkpoint, HP Aruba. Yeah, actually, uh, my company uh, specializes in those uh, solutions. Okay, we, we implement and, uh, yeah, and uh, actually do installation for, for this kind of solution. For, and for our customer, our customer is all business. We are B2B. Our model is all B2B. We don't really uh, face the consumer. Yeah. And uh, uh, why, why I can actually uh, understand Intel and AMD much is not really 100% uh, due to my business, but uh, uh, me myself is quite an uh, uh, IT geek, I would say. Uh, since since uh, school time, I'm those that uh, my classmates already look for me to help them repair the computer kind of thing. And uh, whoever want to buy computer, they will come to me and ask me which processor they should look for, which restaurant they go look for, and then I will build a list for them. Lah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so this is some of my background. Lah. Okay, okay. Wow, that is very interesting. So I think you started, you know, just by you know having interest in computer. And then you know, that was how you got exposed into you know things like Intel and of course the whole graphic card and etc. And of mm. course your business, if I'm not wrong, it seems like it is related to the uh, cybersecurity as well as some of the uh, software lah. Okay, so I think that is also an area whereby personally I'm very interested about because I see that you know moving forward, uh, cybersecurity is also something that is booming. And I think your website or your Facebook, okay, I love one company that you have been sharing, and that is this company called TSMC, okay, Taiwan Semiconductor. <laughs> okay, but that is not going to be the key <laughs> company that we're going to talk about, but probably I'm sure that we can actually look forward to that sharing as well in the future because I do uh, see huge potential. What, what, what do you think about TSMC? Maybe a quick one. Oh, well, I love TSMC. I love TSMC. <laughs> Okay, okay. So will TSMC be a buy or buy? Okay, we leave it for the next time. Okay, so for today, we are going to focus on Intel versus AMD. We're going to share with you both companies, the insights and the background about these two companies. Okay, so mm. I think for time being, I'm going to pass it over to Banana Vester to actually share with us mm. more about this particular company. So over to you, mm. Ken. Mm. All right, okay. So... Uh... I will uh, share my screen. 
Okay, give me a one moment. Okay, yep. So anyway, for the rest of you guys, if you have any questions later on, okay, with regards to, okay, yeah, just put it into the chat box. And of course, before we start, maybe we can just do a quick poll, okay, based on your personal opinion, who do you, which, what, which company do you think is better, AMD or Intel? Can you just put it into the chat box, AMD or Intel? Oh. Okay, right now we see AMD, AMD, AMD. Okay, let's 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 have more response. Okay, wow, so far five AMD six. Oh, Albert, Albert is the only Henry is Intel, Amit is also Intel, but pretty much I think eighty percent is AMD. So yeah. Eugene also AMD. I think that is the reason why we need to do this today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Back to you. So this is a presentation I actually I done uh, about four weeks ago. So uh. Uh, it's before the latest uh, Intel uh, quarterly earning. Okay, this is uh, where I do a comparison between the two. Okay, yeah. So uh, let's start off with uh, what does AMD do? Uh, okay, so what AMD do right is very very focused. Okay, they don't do a lot of things. Okay, they only do CPU. Okay, CPU the computer computer processor. Okay, and also GPU. Okay, GPU is the graphic card. Okay, if you are a gamer, you definitely know. Okay, and uh, they are very, very focused. They don't do other than these two. Okay, they all, of course they do a bit of customization to meet those uh, enterprise and uh, data center customer. Okay, but uh, that is a minority part of their business. Okay, so if you see AMD, how they make money, right? Okay, uh, there's only processor and graphic. Okay, processor and graphics, CPU and GPU. And if you see that this, this, uh, this, is, this is from Q1, okay? Actually, the, the value for Q2 is out already, it's improving, okay? But the ratio is still uh, more or less there, okay? So most of their revenue is from the computing and graphic. And then they have some revenue, okay? A smaller portion from the enterprise uh, where they do embedded and uh, semi-custom. Okay, okay hold on, uh, Ken. Yeah, I think your screen is not in the pres presenter mode because we are not able to see the full full screen. We are seeing the uh, presenter. Okay, let me swap the... Okay, let me... I think I share the wrong screen. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Okay. No worries. okay. I think people are mm. very focused. They, they, <laughs> they want to see the... Okay, okay uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm... Okay. So it's, it's correct now. Uh? Okay. Yep. Okay. And then, okay, so uh, why everybody loves AMD, okay? It's because of this so-called uh, the breakthrough and uh, game changer, okay? The keyword is uh, 7NM, okay? So uh, I think uh, for those that is a non-tech person, okay? Uh, a simple way to see that is the smaller this number is, Okay, the smaller this number is, okay, the better the performance of the CPU or the GPU will be. Okay, not just the performance, but in terms of power consumption and also heat generation, right? Okay, all those will be scaled better, okay, when you reduce the size of your the, the transistor. Actually, it's the gap between the transistor. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, I don't want to go too technical, but this is generally the idea. The lower, the better. And this, this thing has been, uh, Intel has been leading. Okay? Intel has been making uh, uh, this uh, semiconductor CPU, uh, CPU for more than 50 years, and they are leading all the way. And AMD has been lagging behind all this time. Okay? AMD has never catch up. But recently, okay, recent, in recently, I think since last year, uh, it's like boom, okay. Suddenly, AMD come up seven nm processor while Intel is still using fourteen, okay. Fourteen, uh, that means seven times two is actually the size is double, okay. That's what happened, okay. And then, so what is the result? So the result is actually a industry leading uh, performance per dollar, performance per watt. So what means that uh, the power you spend for the for the performance, you actually uh, uh, you less, use less power, okay? And it's, it's not just for the desktop, okay? The, for laptop and also data center as well, okay? Data center means like those uh, 
enterprise corporate or cloud provider, they use the, uh, they have servers, there's those, those uh, very powerful PC, right? They call it servers in their, they, 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 they buy those uh, uh, special type of CPU for their server. Okay. Okay. And then uh, there are also like uh, uh, a report saying that AMD have been gaining market share uh, in 10 quarter in a row. So including the, the letters of Q2, I think it's uh, considered 11 quarter already. Lah. Okay. And they actually uh, command as much as about 50% uh, for high-end category. Okay. Yeah. High-end category means uh, all those, uh, the most high-performing model where the gamer or the PC enthusiasts, maybe they do a lot of video editing, all those things, right? Okay, they will look for the best one. And at those market, right, they actually uh, have uh, about uh, up to 50% uh, market share. Okay. Okay, yeah. Maybe for now, we just uh, hang on for a while. Yeah, mm. so I think maybe I just add on a little bit on this like, because I think for myself recently, I've been looking at laptop as well as desktop as well. Mm. And I know in the past, you know, where we are looking for a laptop, we are like i3, i5, and then i7 is like the best. And uh, usually we won't even look at AMD. And I think in the past, maybe five to 10 years ago, people always say that AMD is always hotter and the performance might not be as good as Intel. So we always feel that mm. AMD is not as good. But I think yeah. recently when I actually did the comparison, you know, we always look at the number of core and the number of thread. And if we were to compare Intel versus AMD, hmm. straight away, I think without a doubt, you will choose AMD because the price is just much lower. Yeah, and I think uh, from a consumer point of view, I think that is why AMD suddenly like, you know, when, when, when skyrocket. Because we, we, if you feel that as a consumer, I would prefer to buy AMD right now rather than um, uh, in okay, but Bowen, I will say uh, for tech savvy uh, or IT literate guy, maybe like you and myself, right? We will go for AMD if you want to buy a new laptop or PC. But there's still a lot of average consumer out there, right? Okay? They don't really care. Uh, they don't look like costing. Uh. <laughs> yes, Seriously. that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And, and, the, and then Intel is still the natural preferred brand. It's still ah. the... Uh, uh, yes, the branding yes, yes. is still wow. better. The that's true, that's true. Better. I'm talking from my own perspective. But like <laughs> what you say, yeah, I think comparing Intel and AMD, like if I'm totally new, I would definitely choose Intel. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can go on. Okay, okay. so uh, okay, so all this improvement, right? Okay, it is it is not meaningful if it doesn't reflect in the financial performance, right? Okay, so and we can see like since uh 2016 where the new CEO Lisa Su uh, in MD, okay, after she take over, she has been doing a very good job in uh, uh, turning over MD, okay, and if you can see their revenue, their gross margin, their operating margin and net income, right, has been going up very healthily, steadily, okay, but the, I will say if you look at the operating margin, it's still uh, it's so so lah, okay, uh, they they've been uh, doing a, a making a lot of progress, but they still have, uh, they still need to improve, okay, before I will say their business is solid, uh, okay. Yeah, they're actually also from losing money at 2016 to become a profitable, okay. So how about Intel, okay. So Intel, okay, a lot of people know Intel as a CPU maker, okay. And uh, many people doesn't know what else Intel does. Okay, what else Intel does? Okay, so uh, Intel is all is actually in five G network. Okay, Intel is actually in uh, AI analytic, and Intel is actually the leading uh, autonomous drive autonomous driving uh, solution provider. They call it uh, ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistant Assistant System. Okay, wow, wow. Up to mm. now, I think you got me excited because you mentioned a few keywords, lah, which is 5G, uh, and I think autonomous driving, and of course, uh, the other one is, which mm. one, which one? Uh, yeah, AI. AI, AI, yes, AI, artificial intelligence. Yeah. And, then, and then in the data center, they actually, uh, beside the data center CPU, they actually offered uh, the memory and storage, okay, which is class leading, okay, yeah. So uh, their memory and storage, right? Uh, how class leading it is, is like uh, their performance, their technology, right? Is like a few years ahead of all the other brands. 
it's, it's like how TSMC is ahead of everyone else in terms of the, the semiconductor, the shrinking, the semiconductor. Yeah, TSMC is leading. But in the memory space, uh, the storage, uh, uh, I think if you, if you are IT literate, you know SSD, okay? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And SSD is like one of the best upgrade ever for even for the old PC, it will improve the performance a lot. Yes. And then in this SSD space, right, okay, Intel has the best, okay, it has the best and it has not beaten and the margin of the performance is, the gap is very far, okay? That means all the competitor, right, they are nowhere near Intel. And Intel, you, 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 you rarely use Intel in your, in your PC or laptop. Why? Because it's, it is also expensive because it is so, 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 so good, right? They only use it in the data center. All the cloud provider, like people like Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, Alibaba, AliCloud, right? Okay. Yes. So they will look for the, the best, okay? And they, and, and they will go for this kind of uh, uh, SSD. They call Intel called the Optane, Optane SSD. Okay, Optane. So basically in the yeah. cloud server, uh, when it comes to memory space, Intel pretty much dominate the whole market. Uh. Yeah, actually in the data center, right? Intel have more than 90% market share. Oh, okay. 90, more than 90%. Yeah, more than 90%. Yeah. Wow, wow. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. So if you see, right, okay. Uh, AMD is competing with Intel on the edge computing, par partially on the edge computing, okay. Because Intel, besides do CPU, right, they also do 5G modem. They also do Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi chip, Wi-Fi 6 series, okay. And then... Uh, uh, in the cloud, okay, AMD is competing with the server CPU, but then that's it, okay? And then uh, AMD also have GPU, which Intel doesn't have at the moment. Uh, GPU means the graphic card, okay? And uh, Intel actually have uh, already have in the roadmap of upcoming GPU to compete head on with uh, AMD Radeon and also NVIDIA. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, so Radeon is under AMD, the graphic yeah, the GPU part. AMD. Yes. Okay. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Intel, the CPU business, right? Okay. So uh, it is very obvious uh, recently. It's really, it's like a uh, really beat up. Okay. It's like uh, the overshadowed by AMD. Okay. Uh, however, uh, if you if you look at the data center, okay, they're still commanding about ninety five percent market share. Uh, this was the earlier earlier this year la, This figure la. Probably now Intel may have a little bit more, uh, up to maybe 7 or 8% based on the projection. But uh, even, in, even AMD grow 100% also, right? He, it doesn't go to 10%. It doesn't grow near 10%. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Intel, they have been stuck at this uh, 14 nm design for a few years. And uh, it only able to release uh, 10 nm okay? But the, for the mass production, it's coming up this quarter for laptop, and then for the data center, it will be uh, the quarter four, okay? And then the recent, recent bad news, Apple dropped Intel CPU from its Mac lineup, okay? Uh, Mac lineup uh, consists of their MacBook, MacBook Pro, their MacBook Air, and then their iMac as well, okay? This three lineup product, actually, if, if you don't know, right, they're all using Intel previously. And ah, okay. MD, MD has decided to drop them. Okay, and uh, this guy, Jim Keller, okay, uh, Jim Keller is actually a genius. Uh, he actually designed a lot of uh, very good chip. He designed uh, some of the Apple, 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 they have A, A6, A7, A9, all this kind of chip, right? Every generation, they revise. So uh, this Jim Keller actually designed like two of uh, uh, Apple chip. And then uh, uh, the, if, if you are AMD fan, right, you know Ryzen. Okay, the Ryzen Zen architecture is by this Jim Keller. Okay, and this Zen architecture seems like what helped uh, turn, turn around for AMD also. Uh. And apparently Jim, uh, Intel has hired Jim Keller over, okay, but uh, everyone thought that, oh, Jim Keller maybe could, could help Intel to turn around the, 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 uh, the uh, R&D for the CPU uh, to, to the shrinking the process. But then it, he also resigned. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's quite a few bad news. Like, that's why the mm. share price of Intel actually went down. So what mm. about handphone or iPhone? Are they also using Intel or is actually... uh, no Intel is not in uh, the phone business. I mean they, they don't do uh, they, they don't do processor for handphone. Mm, okay. Mm. okay. Those are like uh, Qualcomm. Okay, Qualcomm and MediaTek, they are few brand and Samsung, as you know. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. Uh, besides CPU, right? Okay, Intel is actually a lot more thing, lah. Okay, a lot more thing. Okay, they actually do this thing called the VPU, Vision Processing Unit. Okay, if you know Microsoft Hololens, ah, uh, where they 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 use the AR for productivity. Okay, if they're actually using the Intel, uh, this VPU chipset. Okay, yeah, and then uh, like uh, just like I mentioned the uh, the autonomous driving. Okay, Intel. Uh, the mobile eye division, okay, they actually uh, have uh, over 25 global automakers, including all the largest ones. Okay, mm -hmm. I think except, except uh, Tesla also was their customer, but uh, uh, I think last year they, they pulled out, they want to save costs, they want to uh, do something, uh, create something on their own. Okay. I see, I see. Wow, so they are also leading like, in terms of uh, autonomous they are leading. They are leading. So, so currently, uh, the, 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 this is consists of a small portion of their revenue, but mm -hmm. this segment, right, okay, have a very, very large uh, potential to grow. Definitely, definitely. If you, if you can visualize in the future, right, okay, mm. a lot of the, a lot of car will be driverless. Yes. And the car will be connected, okay, they will be uh, talking to each other so that to avoid collision, to avoid uh, accident, mm -hmm. it will be much mm -hmm. safer, automated, Okay, and, and mobile eye will be one of the key. I see, I see. So can I also say that, right, I think because, you know, now a lot of people is focusing on the 7 nanometer as well as the 10 nanometer in that AMD is, is actually uh, leading because they are smaller. Where, whereby in this particular area, whereby in terms of travelers, in terms of the VPU, the size actually is not so critical. Because uh, not, not really, because the 7 nm is only meant for the high performance computing. Okay, mm. high performance computing. And all these uh, the like the internet of thing, the 5G, the driverless thing, right? Okay, it doesn't need uh, the, the, the supercomputer kind of output. Correct, correct. So the technology is way it is totally different. Uh. And as yes. of this area, Intel is like you know way leading in terms mm. of the technology as compared to the other competitor. Correct, correct. In fact, TSMC, right, even though they, they have a 7 and then production line, right, they still have the 14 and then they still have the 20 over and then and 60 over and then production. Okay? I okay. They still demand for that for different, different use case, different sector. Yeah, so same for Intel, okay? I mean, for a lot of different other, other sector, right, they don't need the 7 and then. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's understand. Yeah. So, okay, this is the, the Optane SSD that I talked about just now, okay? Yeah, if you can see the performance, right, okay? Uh, uh, you can see, like, the next, the next best one, right, the Samsung 960 Pro, okay, I know now got 970 already, la. the Optane SSD also got new model already, but you can see, right, for the similar generation, like, what kind of gap they have. Okay. Yeah. Easily it's really, three really, times faster. Yeah, it's it's a super fast. Okay. It's it's super super fast. It's used in in like the supercomputer in a very, very large database used by cloud provider. It's not meant for the, the average uh, PC or laptop use. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Mainly yeah. for the cloud. La. And I think yeah. somebody actually asked any competitor for the Intel mobile eye. Intel mobile eye. I think there is some la, but then uh uh, I don't really uh, research on that part. Definitely there is, okay. But Intel, I know the mobile one is the largest currently. They are the monopoly. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, they also have this uh, DC, Optane DC memory. Basically, this DC memory is the next generation of a memory where they blur the line between the memory and the storage. Okay, uh, basically memory, right? If you know a bit of computer, you know memory, when you shut down the PC, the, all the data will be gone. Right? And yeah. then when you start, and then you need time to start up because uh, the PC need time to move all the data from the storage to the memory again to start up your Windows. So mm -hmm. this, this next generation memory right, is it, actually a breakthrough, okay? It can have as much as uh, 10 times 
ten eggs to ten times density, and also it 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 memory it, it memorize. I mean, it doesn't forget. Even you when you shut down your PC right and you turn on back again right, your memory content exactly what it has before shut down. Okay. So again, this technology is uh, mostly for a lot of uh, big database and AI related. Okay, uh, I think sooner or later it will be cost efficient enough for consumer. But right now, uh, Intel is actually developing this product for the data center. I see, I see, I see. Because when you use the word memory, right? Uh, mm. What I will, I will, I will link it to is actually the RAM. So is it's this the, the RAM, RAM or is this is the RAM. SSD Correct. or this is the RAM? Uh? This is the next generation of the RAM. I see, I yeah. see. Okay. So the very very huge capacity. That means it, the the capacity of the RAM, right, can comparable to your hard disk already. Right? Maybe one TB, two TB, one. Oh, need. okay. Yeah, yeah. Because right now it's like you when you have sixteen gig of RAM, it's like wow. Uh, you know, but imagine you have like one thousand. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it's like if you you look at the amount right, you will be a hey, complete. Is this a storage? Is this my hard disk or is this a memory? And and yes, it's a memory and and it can go up to the TB level. So do they combine both product? That means you just need this thing that can be both uh, the SSD and the RAM. The, okay, the SSD part right. They, this this one they use a similar uh technology to use ah, okay. to make, uh, the storage. Okay? okay, this one is actually to to uh to have the next generation RAM. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then next is uh, 5G. Okay. So uh, I think everybody agree that 5G is the next big thing. Yes. Okay? yes. And it, I, unlike Telco, Telco, I, I, like Telco, they need to spend money to upgrade the infrastructure to mm -hmm. support 5G. Okay. And Intel is the one who will be very happy. Okay to supply all these uh, chips uh, for the equipment for all the base station. You know base station where they have uh, the 4G, all the 3G, 4G tower, right? Mm -hmm. They have tower where they actually broadcast your signal for your phone, right? Okay. Correct. All those base station, right? They will require component from Intel as well. I see, I see. Yeah. And then uh, with 5G, right? IoT will proliferate, okay? Internet of Things will boom, okay? And then also uh, AI, analytic, big data, all this will need to support all the, the a lot of the internet of things. And Intel is actually the only CPU, right? Okay, Intel built the only CPU with the AI built-in. Okay, yeah. AI built-in CPU. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> AI built-in CPU. They, they give an AI accelerator, la, okay? Which means mm -hmm. that when you, when you do AI computation, right? Okay, it is accelerated is optimized ah okay okay that means like by, by default right now when we buy a new laptop automatically kind of like it comes with ai feature in it uh actually uh, a lot of things i say right it's mostly focused on the data center because data center, data center, okay. center right is where uh the inter business grow the most okay and the consumer, right, is actually very saturated already. That's true. So year that's true. on year growth, right? Okay, it will be the same for all Intel, AMD, okay, uh, and then whoever sell the PC like the Dell or HP, right? Okay, the growth year on year, right, is actually very very uh increase. Sometimes it will decrease also. Mm. And and the recent few quarter, recent two quarter, it actually go up is because of the COVID. It's because ah, of okay. All uh, work from home, learn from home, all these kind of initiative, right? Then everybody have to buy PC. That's yep. why it actually go up. Okay, so basically Intel have a, a full range of uh, uh, product, okay, where they will uh, be be uh, used in the different 5G ecosystem, lah, okay? They are ready to capitalize on the 5G go. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and then uh, Wi-Fi 6, okay, uh, uh, Wi-Fi six is basically basically the latest generation of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, okay. So Wi-Fi, uh, I think a lot of people, right, especially if you're a gamer, right, sometimes you will not prefer Wi-Fi. You like to plug in the cable. Okay, you want to plug in the cable so that you reduce the lag, right? Mm. So, so Wi-Fi six is supposed to be the uh the latest generation of Wi-Fi, and it is uh uh meant to be uh very very close to the wire. That means the latency, the speed, right? It's very, very close compared to plug in the wire. Okay. And also uh, uh, very uh, resilient against like, interference, all the kind of thing, okay? And, and when you buy your laptop, when you buy your handphone, right? 
uh, always it come with your it's a Wi-Fi chip. Always come with a Wi-Fi chip, right? Okay. And as of today, right? As of today, all the latest laptop, right? Okay, it will ship with Intel chip. Okay, because ah, okay. there's no other brand. Uh, eventually there will be like, but they are the first one, and currently they are the only one. Okay, eventually there will be other brand, but right now if you Google, if you want to look for the Wi-Fi adapter, Wi-Fi six adapter, the latest version one, if you see like ASUS, Dealing, Kipling, whatever brand, right, the chipset is Intel one. I mean the brand is Intel. Okay, okay. So the inside la, is all Intel, la, but outside they can put their own branding, etc. Et Correct. Correct. Okay, wow. So this is the uh, upcoming uh, Intel, Intel uh, GPU, the graphic card. Okay. This is actually to, to uh, compete hit on with AMD and NVIDIA. Okay. Not just for gaming, but for uh, the AI, AI, AI and uh, all those heavy graphical computational in the data center as well. Okay. And uh, uh, this part uh, is where uh, it's rumored now that uh, it will be made by TSMC, like, where they outsource. Okay, yeah. And I think that is why you say that TSMC is the best, like, because no matter which company, okay, can be Qualcomm, NVIDIA, or whoever, yeah. everybody has to use TSM. <laughs> TSMC actually uh, is, is like uh, uh, they are making the chip for everyone, uh, a lot of, a lot. Of, yeah, yeah so no matter who is winning the race, la, but TSMC is like the ultimate winner. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, so if you see, right, Intel Financial, right, okay, their last, last year, right, if you look at last year, right, okay, their data center, right, the, the light blue is actually the data-centric portion, and the, the dark blue is actually the PC-centric. PC-centric means the PC laptop and all the modern chipset for the PC, la, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you see the trend, right, okay, they are actually their data center one, right? Has been growing a lot more than the PC centric one. Okay, this is Q1. For Q2, their, their, their light blue is already 52% of the revenue. Okay, Q2, wow. they already go to 52%. And Q, this is a Q, Q1, their data center already grow 34. Q2, they grow another, I think, 36% for the data centric, the above of the part. Okay, so which so, means that right now the data segment is larger than the consumer segment. Can I say that? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, okay, wow, okay. Mm. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think uh, I will skip this, okay. Because this is all this uh, Q1 data, la. so it's just talking about uh, uh, data center, okay, yeah, yeah. the data center but grow a lot, okay, but the PC unit also increased, but it's actually due to the COVID, la. okay. Mm. And this is actually about the, the total addressable market, okay? So PC-centric, okay? This is where uh, AMD and Intel will be like uh, fighting a lot, okay? Head to head, okay? And it doesn't grow a lot based on the protection, right? 1% Kager. Actually, negative one. It actually oh, will okay, okay. It will be shrinking slowly, okay? Shrinking slowly, okay? Yeah. Because a yes. lot of people actually moving from uh, PC laptop and then a lot of people they have phone, right? Or tablet, correct, they correct. do a lot of things already. Yeah, okay? or even tablet. La, so I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this part is actually a sunset business, you see. Actually going flat, not, not really sunset, but it will be flat. Okay? Negative 1%. Okay? Mm. Year over year. And where, where, the, where the Intel shines, right, is actually on the data-centric part. Where okay. the, there are all the memory, okay, there are the Xeon processor, okay, the Xeon processor is where I say the built-in AI one, okay, it's for the data center for AI, and then IoT, okay, the AI, ADAS, the advanced driver assistance system, okay, for video, video, uh, the AI analytic for video, and then for 5G, all these things, okay, so this is the part where we will see to be continuously growing, okay, and in fact, this data is before COVID, mm. okay, before COVID, and, and due to COVID, right, okay, okay, by right, this is uh, the estimation of 220 billion by 2023, mm -hmm. the data is uh, from 2019, and I will say, because of COVID, right, and all these uh, new habit, right, if you agree, uh, I'm not sure about uh, you, I think, 
COVID shifted how people work to learn, how people shop. Okay, I think you there's there's some breakdown. Okay, mm. I think yeah, just now we can't really hear the last word. Oh, the last oh, okay, sentence. Okay. okay, you say that uh does it affect how 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 we actually shop or how we actually Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was saying uh uh COVID-19, right? Okay, I, uh, if you agree with me, okay, I believe that it has permanently shifted our way to work, to learn and to consume, to shop to buy thing. Okay, yeah. So if we agree that actually after COVID-19, it has changed the way we work, you know, we shop and everything. Can you just put in uh, 888 if you agree with this? 888. Yeah. We just want to make sure that you guys are also still here. Huh? Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Dexter, say 888. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We yeah. see the response. So, so if that is true, if that has, if that is true, if everyone agree, right? Okay. Basically, this figure, right? Okay. Will be accelerated. Okay, it will be accelerated. Okay, all the data center like people like Alibaba, Amazon, okay, they Google, Microsoft, right? They are actually buying a lot more infrastructure to boost their capacity to support all this search, right? The sudden search of the demand due to the COVID. You, if you you think everybody work from home, right? Everybody use Zoom. Everybody use the Microsoft team, right? They, do you think they need to add more server, add more capacity or not? If not, right, they will be very lagging, right? very lagging, and then you get disconnected. You're not enough resources. Ah, true, true, true. Yeah. yeah. And I think with this uh, COVID-19, a lot of business also, you know, they have their business continuity plan. And many yes. of them is actually moving, you know, anything that can be converted to online cloud, mm. you know. Uh, I see that many of the chief technical officers, I think one of the biggest uh, thing that they have to address is how to convert their existing business from a physical one into a cloud business. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So next, right. Okay. I will go into their, some of their financial, financial data, right. To see how good is their figure for Intel. I'll start with Intel first. Okay. Just now we see AMD has been turning around. Okay, and then we compare with Intel the businesses, and then now we go into the Intel figure, and then we will compare it with the AMD figure okay. after that. Okay, yeah, but, but maybe before we go and show them the figure, yeah, uh -huh. maybe we just want to check with them like, because I think when we first started, most of them selected AMD as the preferred uh company that they prefer. So maybe mm -hmm. after hearing up till now, okay, can you just revote again? Okay, which company do you think has put more potential growth over the next? Five years, Intel or AMD? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Are you, are, uh, Ken, are you looking at the at the group chat? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. I think uh, yeah. The, the whole thing has just flipped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because everybody, everybody see right this this part right, sixty eight billion market share, negative one percent Kaggle grow rate right. This is where AMD will be fighting a lot. This is like eighty percent, ninety percent of it, uh, AMD's uh, business. Okay. Well, well uh, of course, I know AMD also trying to go into the data center, but only one tiny bit of the data center. Yeah, true, yeah. true, true. Mm. Yeah, but I think both companies are still good, uh, definitely. Mm. <laughs> yeah, can move okay, on. Okay. okay, okay. so now we move to the uh, financial, uh, okay? So if you see, right, okay, all these figures, they're revenue, right? I start with revenue, right? Since 2010, okay, until now, right? Intel almost double their revenue. Okay, I think after the latest Q2, right, this figure is seventy eight billion already. The last twelve month is seventy eight billion, and then if you see the gross margin, right, it's very healthy. Okay, uh, almost sixty percent, and then their net income, okay, is actually double. Okay, if you see their revenue has not doubled, but their revenue have from eleven billion has doubled to twenty two billion. Okay, oh. so you know Intel, right? been improving their branding and they actually can command a better pricing and margin. True, true, true. Yeah, year. margin is higher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The revenue has not increased 100%, eh, but the, the net income has increased 100% already. Right? Mm. Okay. And then they're also paying dividend. As of now, I think the dividend is, uh, I think, almost 3% due to all the, the price drop, okay? all the sentiment. <laughs> okay? and, and also, you can see they are free cash flow. Okay, the latest quarter is already uh, twenty one million. Okay, they are actually uh, 
suspended their share buyback because of COVID-19. Because yeah. of COVID-19, they suspended their share buyback. And also, they have go and take a new loan. I think they take a new loan consists of about 10 billion. Okay. They're actually okay. strengthening their war chest. They're preparing for the worst. Okay. Or they may, they're either preparing for the worst or they're preparing to fight back. They may be dumping money or new strategy, whatever. Yeah, just, just wait. Lah, okay. Company, when company have a lot of cash, right? They can do a lot of things. They have a lot of yeah. options. They, they can do a lot of things. I okay? see. Yeah. I think interest rate is low. Lah, so just borrow. Lah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and if you see, their yeah, net margin, right? Okay. What Intel sell? Eh? Hardware, right? Hardware. How often you see hardware seller, right? They have uh, such a crazy net margin. 30%. Eh? <laughs> uh, okay. But this one is actually uh, uh, contributed by all the shortage. Okay? Actually, I would say it's due to the demand higher than supply. So they actually have a lot of in the material shortage, shortage, and then they're actually able to raise the price. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the return of equity also. So if you see, I put a banana, that means it's very good, lah, the bigger. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, interest coverage. Interest coverage means that, uh, let's say if the Intel right doesn't earn any money, right, it only pay serves the loan interest every year, right? It can actually pay for 54 years before it go bankrupt. That's what it means. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Wow. As long as we see a lot of banana, we are excited. Yeah. So all this uh, growth rate is past. La, okay, past. But uh, uh, we don't want to emphasize so much. La. We want to like uh, do some guesstimate, guesstimate on the future growth rate based on the, like, the total addressable market and the trend com in, co in combination. La. Okay. Mm. And then uh, uh, lastly is the debt over equity. Debt over equity meaning that like their total asset value right the equity over the debt right what is the ratio so anything you see below 0 0.5 right is actually very healthy mm. yeah okay that means they sell off everything right they use less than half they can pay off the debt already okay nice okay cool yeah, yeah so this is also outdated uh, this, this figure is also outdated okay uh pe actually the current pe i think is below nine already due to the recent uh uh, drop of the share price. Okay, the EPS increased and the share the share price dropped, right? So now I think the P is less than nine, and the five year average is about fifteen. Okay, so I just want to ask everyone, like, right, have you seen any tech stock that have P below ten recently in the last past few months? Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you think this is this is undervalued, like very very undervalued, can you just type in nine nine nine? Okay, because the P now is nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have I have not seen it for a long time, definitely. And yeah. I think with the current tech boom, uh, mm. I think a lot of that of them is like 40, 50, or even more than 100. Okay. Uh, just for information, right? The last time Intel valuation go to so low, uh, about eight or nine, uh, is during 2010, uh, when there's a scandal. Okay, uh, actually it's, it's a fraud. It's a fraud where Intel actually give a special rebate to Dell. Okay? I think everyone Remember Dell during that time, about 10 years ago, they are the monopoly of a PC seller, right? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So during that time, Intel actually give a special rebate to Dell, but there's a one condition for Dell to receive. On, uh, if they fulfill this condition, only Dell can receive the special rebate. And the condition is they cannot buy AMD CPU. Ah, okay. So uh, all the Intel. <laughs> Yeah, so they actually got into this cartel thing, the anti-monopoly law. Ah, and then okay. I remember Dell got fined for about 100 million. I forgotten Intel got fined for how much already. And, and the share price actually crashed that time for Intel and, and then I think both Dell also. Yeah, yeah and I think partly, why, why do you think the, the, the price actually, the PE actually dropped to so low? I think somebody also asked in the question just now uh, with regards to the Think the leaving of the chief engineer and also mm. Jim Keller. Uh, do you think it could be something to do with the leadership or do you think is there any issue with the company? Okay, I think uh, the company itself is a, is a great company. Okay, uh, I look at them, they have been uh, doing pretty good in uh, most of the area. Okay, even though uh, during the COVID-19, right, 
they manage it very, very well, okay? And they actually fulfill more than 90% of their order uh, in time. They deliver in time, more than 90% of the. You see a lot of factory need to shut down, need to close, right? But they actually manage it very good. Like, manage it very good. And then if you see their, their branding, their marketing also very good, okay? And in fact, if, if you see, because like Bowen, you say you, you, if you buy a new PC, you go for AMD, right? Okay? Mm. But if you do a Google search, right? You just do a simple Google search, best CPU for gaming, 2020, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I actually, uh, you can, and uh, I think all of you can do it, okay? But I can tell you the result I see, right? Okay? Just this morning, I do a Google search, okay? I think like five, four out of five results, right? Mm -hmm. Intel is still the, the best one, you know, on the number one one. Ah, For number gaming. one. Okay. Yeah. Basically, they actually, like, I think they get a lot of reviewer, okay? And they actually are able to make it uh, sound very favorable to them. And in fact, they also, even though they're losing on some, some side, right? Okay. They're actually able to, to use other, they, they compromise a bit on other part, like the, the, they draw more power, they use better cooling, right? They still can get a better, uh, if you are a gamer, you know this term, la, they still, you still can get a better frame per second compared to AMD. I the see, FPS. I see. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I just did a quick search and basically, yep, the top five is still... The uh, top one, the number one is still yeah, Intel. Intel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but if, in terms of like value for money and all that, you know, people will still, yeah, will select AMD as the winner. Yeah. La. But yeah, for the so hardcore people, gamer... Yeah, people that look for the best, they still go for the Intel, okay? So uh -huh. for people that know how to do research and want but value for money, they'll go for AMD. And for people that are not really educated, they just run, go in, right? If you go in a PC shop, you tell them you have like $1,000, sing dollar, they, they definitely they will give you AMD. But you tell them you have 2,000, right? Automatically, they give you Intel already. Mm. Yeah. Recently, I just bought one PC, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Wow, oh, uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. And if you see the okay, so now let's let's look a bit on the uh AMD part, uh, okay, AMD mm. part, uh, okay. Yeah. So AMD, okay, AMD uh latest quarter they have a goal again, okay, in terms of the revenue, but it's still uh below below eight, it's still seven something billion uh, revenue. So if you look at the revenue itself, right, okay, uh in terms of, if you value the company by the size based on revenue, right? Mm -hmm. AMD actually sell the, the revenue is less than 10% of Intel. Okay, less than 10% of Intel. Okay, and then if you see their, their gross margin, I would say, okay. Okay, gross margin is okay. Okay, their free cash flow also uh, is increasing, but it's uh, uh, currently is okay also, okay? Mm. And then if you see their net income is, uh, yeah, I think we see the ratio better like not percentage, okay? If you see the net margin percentage, right? It's actually single digit on it, okay? Single oh, digit. the net margin is 6%. I think, I think everybody will not be surprised because uh, all this year, right? All this year, uh, what AMD has been associated with you, okay? If you want to buy cheap PC, then you look for AMD. Anyone agree? <laughs> Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. <laughs> yeah, so, so actually, they, they actually brand themselves as the cheaper one. And they also, uh, uh, they, all this year, okay, but moving forward, I think maybe they can, uh, they can do something uh, to repair the brand. Uh. But then this perception in consumer, right, has been there for so many years already. Like 20, 20 30 years, right, it has been like this. Yeah, so, and when they want to increase price, right, then, then people will say, hey, then I better buy Intel already, uh. Okay, mm. it's the same price, right? Yeah. Okay, and then you see the interest covers, right? Okay, yeah. If there no income, right, that they, uh, they can only pay for ten years, seven, say about seven years. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As much no banana, I don't like the figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we all can agree. Lah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just looking at this alone is definitely mm. not that fantastic. Mm. And of course, yeah. if we compare so, with Intel, it's even worse. Yeah, and then in terms of the third world liquidity, actually is quite healthy. Like they don't have a lot of loan. I think mm -hmm. recently they, they pay back a lot of their loan. They used to have very, very high loan. Ah, okay. 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 And the PE is the, the PE, right? Okay. <laughs> the latest one is actually 160 over. 
because okay. this is actually uh, uh, four weeks ago before before the AMD run up and the Intel run down. Okay, because it's proportional like, because people see Intel bad and then they go buy AMD. Like. Okay, that's why the price run further up. Now it's 160 over PE, which wow. I feel uh, is, is like a uh, balance. Uh, I'm not sure like, it's like can you, you it's like you're you are if you work on a bridge, right? It's like the bridge one to fall anytime like that. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the 160p part of them contributed by me also like, because I also <laughs> buy AMD. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it also if you buy it, then I think definitely based on the technical, right? And yeah. it's not long term, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm okay. selling then, off. then I think, then I think it's fine. Then I think it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So if you look at the numbers side by side, right? Okay, the revenue, right? Intel have, I think the latest traffic is 78 billion, 78 billion. Uh, AMD about seven over billion, okay? Yeah. If you look at side by side, green color is what I highlighted is the better one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think the interesting thing is you look at how much money Intel is making, 21 billion. So basically two years or three years, they are, they are worth the whole market cap of AMD. <laughs> That's how crazy they are yeah, like, in terms yeah. of the num amount of money they actually are making. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so I think a lot of you will be, have this question, right? Okay. Why Intel share price so cheap? Okay. It's so cheap now. Yeah. So, so uh, the bad news has been started since like a few months ago. Okay. And the delay of the 7 nm, right? It's not it's not the first. The 10 nm, uh, 10 nm is the current generation, also already delayed a uh, few time. Okay, delayed a few time. Okay. And then uh, a lot of media coverage, media coverage talking about AMD gaining share over market in over Intel. But but uh, I would like to ask you this one question, right? Okay. Uh, I'm scratching my head. Uh, if you say AMD gaining share over Intel, right? Okay. How could Intel both the data center and also PC centric, right? Also growing. Okay. AMD gaining for Intel, right? Then Intel should be shrinking, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this is this is actually because of uh, the the opportunity, the market share is actually growing. Okay, mm, it's growing. Mm. Okay, and because AMD is much smaller, okay, and AMD also have a promising, uh, uh, better technology. Actually, it's not their own technology, like they outsource it. Okay, uh, and then they can actually gain more of the new market share. Okay, so the total addressable market, the total available market share, market is actually growing. And and this part, the data center part, is actually going very fast, especially due to the COVID nineteen. The cloud is booming. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Intel market share is gaining as well. Okay. But in terms of percentage, so it actually go down compared to AMD. But I overall, see, see. Intel is still growing. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Yeah. I think but very interesting. Mm. Yeah. But the perception the media is giving like, okay, it's like uh it's like uh zero sum game. Like, okay. The perception that the the media is giving is a zero sum game. But then in fact is both Intel and AMD is also winning. Mm. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, so I think one of the hot topic, right? One of the hot topic, I think, uh, Bowen, you want you want to discuss today, right? Is the uh, the latest uh, Q two earning for Intel, where yep. Intel has announced that they will consider outsourcing. Correct, fact, correct, correct. Uh, in fact, it's com confirmed that they're going to do some outsourcing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think people are concerned about that. Like, and of course, mm. uh, because of that, the share price actually dropped, even though they actually announced uh, better earnings, you know? So yeah. yeah, maybe you can share some light on this area about outsourcing. Mm. Okay, so this part, uh, actually, I have another slide that on this, but I'm not going to flash that, okay? I'll just uh, uh, briefly take up a few points. Okay, I briefly take out a few points. Okay, so okay, if you see uh, outsourcing, right? Why why people uh, put it as a very bad thing? Okay, they they don't like why investors don't like why a lot of people don't like because uh, they actually have emotional thing attached. Okay, emotional thing attached. Okay, because 
this is like a, Intel was the pioneer. Okay? Intel was the pioneer. Intel was leading for like over 50 years. Okay. And they are like the largest semiconductor manufacturer in US. Okay, so they represent Intel represent US, TSMC represent Taiwan, and then they have a SMIC represent China. Okay, so when Intel announced that they're going to outsource due to they're not able to, to uh, uh, successfully R and D the, the new technology in time, okay, then a lot of people actually disappointed. Okay, like for US, it's like uh, the national pride. Right, okay. Uh. They, they're no longer the leader. Okay, they're no longer the leader. They used to be the world leader. Okay, they are pride, the US pride. Okay. And Intel themselves also, because of this ego and pride, right? They have delayed this move for so long. Okay. The 10 and M they have been delayed for, for a few time already. Okay. They have actually compromising the consumers, uh, the the car the what the consumer can get, right? Okay, they've been con con compromising what the consumer can get for a few years already because of their ego and also their pride. Okay. Okay. By right, they actually have a promise. Okay. Not, not by right. They actually have this principle, they have a value to give the leadership, leadership cadence year by year improvement to the consumer. Okay. But they have been not uh, achieving that. They have not been delivering the promise because of their ego and pride. Mm. And this quarter, they announced that they are going back to, to prioritize on that improvement, leadership improvement year on year. Okay? And, and by that, it means they will even outsource. Okay? They will even outsource. Okay? So if you guys, okay, so I asked ask you guys, I think, do you know that NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm, right? They also outsource their chip manufacturing. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you all know? Yeah, if you all know, can you all just put in uh, 111 if you know? Yeah. NVIDIA, AMD, and one more. Qualcomm. Qualcomm, Qualcomm is actually, uh, they make all your processor for all your high-end uh, Android phone. Good. Android phone, uh, yeah. So uh, basically, most of them, uh, pretty much almost all of them yeah. are outsourcing so, so to... Probably, I think a lot of people don't know. Like, okay? I think a lot of people don't know. In fact, this is one of their their advantage you know okay because they can actually focus on uh their design they focus on design even huawei right huawei they have this division called high silicon a subsidiary called high silicon where they are designed they all the kirin if you use iphone you know like kirin 980 kirin 990 right okay mm -hmm. but who manufacture it they don't manufacture it like okay but nobody nobody has that's the business, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still love NVIDIA. A lot of people still love AMD. A lot of people still love Qualcomm. A lot of people still love Huawei. And even Apple, Apple, their, their latest Air 12 chip, okay? They design the chip, but TSMC manufacture it. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Right. So, so, so most of the leader, most of the leadership in the, in the mic, in the, in the CPU chip, right? They don't manufacture the chip themselves. Even, even AMD, they used to have this division called uh, Global Foundry. Hmm. Okay, they used to have a subsidiary called Global Foundry. AMD used to make their own chip. And then Global Foundry actually tried, they actually tried to do this uh, 7NM. The 7NM requires a new technology. It's very, very hard. The new technology called EUV. Okay, EUV is like they need to use some ultraviolet kind of thing to print the, print the, <laughs> uh, the microchip one, okay? They actually give up, like, okay? They give up. And then AMD actually sold off this uh, subsidiary. They sold it out to, I, I forgotten who, uh, Fuji, I, I, I forgotten they sell to who, but they actually sell it, okay? And they actually uh, outsource it to TSMC to do their selling and then. I see, I see, I yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so, we all don't know. La. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if so so to me, right, I think this is actually a strategic kind of thing that all these uh, uh chip designer is doing. Okay. They actually uh, manufacture all the they, they sell their graphic card and media that they, they are so they're they're so so prestigious, right? Mm -hmm. They are the best graphic card, but then they don't make the card. Okay. So this for so for Intel, right? Okay, to me. I think they are actually do something right finally. They actually give up their ego, they give up their pride, 
Okay. Okay. Even though uh, they have been a leadership, okay, now they actually eat the humble pie. Okay. They say, I want to keep the promise to give you a yearly leadership increment in terms of performance hmm. to the consumer. Okay. And for that, they put away their ego and their pride. They do what is right. Okay, so I think I think it's a very very good thing for me. Okay, okay. wow, wow, that's interesting because <laughs> the whole market, you know, to us is like, oh, this is a bad news. But in fact, if you actually dig deeper, it is actually a good news, you know, coming from Intel to actually move towards. Uh, I would say that they still produce on their own, except that for those that require the higher technology, like seven mm or five mm, they will actually outsource to uh, TSMC to actually produce, uh, which is yeah. better because. They have a good mix. Ah. Yes, yes. They, they actually from their earning call, right? The exact wording the CEO and the CTO say, right? It's like they will use a combination of internal and external process. Mm, cool. Yeah. yeah. And if I'm not wrong, even, even today, they are already outsourcing certain product to TSMC. But it's just like probably they want to outsource more lah, okay, to TSMC. Uh, actually, uh, currently... Uh, after the latest announcement, only all the news come out. Mm, uh, mm, before, mm. before this, no. Before ah, this. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. So I think, uh, yep. I think what is important right now, everybody is waiting for is that, uh, so uh, based on what you have shared, okay, for Intel as well as AMD, uh, what do you think? Yes, <laughs> the summary. And I think their, their, their summary is different. Their summary is, do you think, okay, this is going to be a buy, B-U-Y, or is this going to be a buy BYE? So what do you think? Okay, okay, uh, okay. Just a disclaimer. Okay, I am rested in Intel. Okay, okay. I'm rested in Intel. Okay, and uh, my investment thesis is actually a uh, long term one. Okay, I'm not uh, trading it short term. I see. I I buy it due to valuation. Okay, I buy it due to valuation. Okay, and and uh, right now, I, I see Intel is undervalued, okay? And by waiting Intel to, to gain back its fair value, right, okay? You can actually use the DCF calculator. Uh, Guru Focus mm -hmm. have a free uh, DCF calculator. You can put in some uh, conservative, like 10% per annum for the first 10 years for Intel, right? And then maybe 5% uh, for, for, for subsequently, right? You still get more than $70, uh, for the fair value, okay. Uh, I uh, you you want you want me to 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 do it for you now? <laughs> uh, yeah 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 sure sure you can maybe you can uh, just do a quick sharing. It will be uh, definitely that they will say yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Let me share my browser. Okay. So uh, we will look for uh, Guru Focus DCF Intel. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, and then when we click this, okay, when we click this. Okay, so Guru Focus DCF calculator is actually quite good. Uh, okay, they will automatically uh, fill in the share price for you. Now, okay, you see, uh, automatically, if you use the average growth value, which is EOM 0.4 for the first 10 years. Okay, if I put it back to 10, uh, be more a little bit more conservative. Uh, okay, and then the, the terminal stage, I put 4, okay, 4%. 4 terminal stage means uh, from the 11 to 20 years. And then let's say the discount rate, I increase to 15. Okay, discount, discount rate means that I, I want to earn at least 15% a year. If I want okay. to hold this stock, okay, then the fair value is still about sixty three point seven four percent. Okay, so that is like a fair value to buy, yeah. uh, And right so now, the, what is the share price? The yeah, right now it's actually about uh forty seven forty seven point seven three. Forty seven point seven three. So your uh from between the current price to the fair value, right? You still have about twenty six percent upside, lah. The margin of safety. Okay, yep. So based mm. on uh, fundamental, based on a long-term perspective, and of course, based on valuation, mm. uh, you think that Intel is actually 
something good and you personally also have invested interest in Intel as well. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I think I think yeah, your growth value of ten percent is really really conservative because I think uh the recent report in terms of the cloud area, I think the growth was ninety percent if I didn't remember wrongly. Uh no no actually for Intel the latest quarter the I think the data centric part is about forty over percent. Forty over percent. Forty over percent. Their memory memory segment is about seventy over percent, but the PC centric part is actually uh going lower about 7% because PC centric we know that it will be flat one in the future so we don't yeah. need to consider that the, the reason it actually have a healthy grow this few quarter is because of COVID mm. yeah okay so yeah. if you like balance it out right then then I will say uh, realistically uh, probably you can get 15 but uh, if they do well okay if they make a comeback on the R&D right I think they can actually have also a better margin and growth. Okay? But if they continue to outsource, I will say you hurt their margin a bit. La. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But I, yeah, la. So 10% is really like a conservative figure. Mm. And even with 10%, you still get a fair value of $64 you right want to now. see AMD? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if I put AMD, uh, okay. AMD, the auto-populated, auto-populated, uh, figure right is pathetic uh, okay about fair value at five dollar so I I help I help MD to put better better figure so I put thirty percent uh, because they are like uh they are like turning around uh, okay they are yeah. small and grow faster uh, I put thirty percent and then for the next next first ten first ten year thirty percent and the second ten years right I put fifteen percent uh. okay sorry not not four one five fifteen percent okay. 15% and of course I, I want to at least earn 15% a year, right? So discount right. Oh I think cannot already. No, I think no 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 can cannot make it. So it may then 12%. Okay, so it may then 12 percent So the fair value is about uh 40.14. So this is based on 30% per year growth for the next 10 years, and then 15% for the the second the 11 to 20 years. So okay. you get about 40.45. The current stock price is 77. 77. Yes. Yes. So no matter how conservative, how uh, aggressive we are, yeah, you still get pretty much uh, overvalued like, for AMD. Mm. Okay, yes. I think this is definitely a very good insight for all of us, uh, especially for some of us who are invested in the AMD mm. or even Intel. Okay, I think today's sharing is definitely very, 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 very useful. So if you all have find that today's sharing is very good, super good, can you all just put in 888? Okay, 888. Okay, fantastic. So I think the next question is very important. So uh, I think definitely we love to see more of Banana Vesta as well as your analysis. So maybe, Ken, can you share with us how can we actually... Uh, see more of your analysis and how can we be okay. like you? <laughs> okay, so uh, I share this uh, link of my Facebook page on the chat, okay? Facebook slash the dot banana wester. Okay, I think earlier someone also asked me about the slide. Okay, so uh, you can actually download the slide on my Facebook page. Okay, and then uh, I also have a follow up session, right? Okay, the slide you see this one is my for my first sharing session of AMD versus Intel. And then I actually did another session on Intel itself after the Q2 earning report. Okay? Uh, it's also uh, in my page. You can see it in my page also. That was uh, live on uh, last Wednesday. Yeah. And then I also uh, will be posting uh, some other uh, case study as well from time to time. Okay? Uh, for now, I aim to do uh, at least uh, once a week. Okay? Uh, this coming coming Wednesday, coming Wednesday, I'm planning to do on uh, Apple, okay? especially when they have this uh, share split thing, right? I think a lot of people are interested on the share split, right? Okay, So uh, Wednesday, I will actually uh, cover uh, uh, Apple and about uh, share split and how it actually in fact in, in, in how it actually affect the investor. Yeah. Okay, wow, that will be definitely useful. Yeah, maybe I'll yeah. just share on my screen as well uh, yeah. your, your, your website so that yeah, you can uh, actually see. Yeah. 
Yes, the so banana. so yes, this is the banana vester. Okay, so y'all can just search Facebook banana vester. You can find okay, mm. and then please do actually like and follow. Okay, and I think this is the 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 slide the Intel Q two result that we were actually mentioning about. So yeah, do go and watch it, and of course, if you want to follow up with the Apple, okay, yeah, then you have to follow lah. Definitely, I would super highly recommend i think you all definitely will also agree with me that you have learned a lot today from banana fester all right so yes any 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 last thing that you probably want to share with us ken uh eat more banana la. banana <laughs> will help you to analyze stock okay banana will help you to analyze stocks okay yep yeah. so for that analyze okay me. thank you uh. <laughs> thank you so much, Ken. And can we all put down thank you, Banana Vester? Thank you, Banana Vester, into the chat group. Okay. I think uh, the analysis that he did is uh, very, very, very well done. And I think we all can agree with that. And I think he actually uh, is not an easy effort. I think some of you who have tried researching into companies, you know that if you do not have certain background knowledge, you probably have to spend like two weeks uh, trying to digest you know, all the different terminology, etc. And I think uh, this particular presentation, although it's only like one hour plus, you know, but it gives us a very, very clear uh, understanding. And of course, uh, moving forward, okay, how this company can continue to perform as well as to move on. Uh, all right. And we look forward to actually hearing more uh, sharing from Banana Vesta. So once again, thank you so much, Ken. Uh, and, uh, thanks, yeah, thanks really, Owen, for inviting me. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I think uh, that is what we want. Uh. We want to have a community whereby everybody is able to actually grow and to learn more together as well. And uh, to make the whole community actually more vibrant. And most importantly, everybody, we will what together. <laughs> all right. So with okay. that, okay, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, Ken. And uh, yeah, we look forward definitely to your Apple sharing. And uh, hopefully, okay, we will also be able to hear TSMC from you as well. <laughs> okay yeah i think i think definitely that will be an area that mm. people are also interested in. i think throughout this presentation we have been talking a lot about tsmc mm. also so i think everybody will be like oh okay when is the tsmc yeah mm. so if you want to hear more from banana fester on apple as well as tsmc can you all just put in more 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 <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. I think the, the response was, uh, is definitely huge. <laughs> okay. So once again, thank you so much, Ken. Thanks for uh, joining us today uh, for this Sunday. And uh, really, of course, we want to thank the rest of you guys who are here with us. I think we have almost 68 of you on Zoom and uh, another 25 of you on uh, Facebook. Okay. So again, for those of you who actually missed this particular sharing, uh, it will actually be on our Facebook as well. So just go to Ultimate Investing or actually you can go to Banana Vester as well. So the presentation will be there. So y'all can actually go and review it at any point of time. All right. And of course, do follow both of us lah, so that you can put, continue to get more value out of it. So with that, okay, thanks everyone for joining for our special series today on Intel versus AMD. And I, I, I believe that you guys actually go home or rather you're at home. Lah, okay. With new insights on both of the company, right? I think some of the AMD investor is a bit ganjong, a bit scared right now. <laughs> you know, yeah, probably they wanted to buy on Monday, but right now I think maybe they'll wait for a little while. You know, yeah. But okay. anyway, thanks everyone. Thanks so yeah, much, Ken. Thank you everyone. Bye okay. Bye. Invest safe. And yes, invest safe and goodbye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Whoosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>